This is lecture six, contingent rules and credibility in monetary policy. Last week we looked at discretion in monetary policy and commitment in monetary policy. We noted that commitment gave us a optimal inflation rate of zero compared to the case of discretion which was k over lambda. And we noted that k over lambda was the inflation bias of choosing discretion over commitment. However, the problem for commitment it is not necessarily credible. So we need some enforcement mechanism that can give the authority credibility, which is an assumption in the commitment outcome. And we have some examples of fixed exchange rate systems that we could use as an enforcement mechanism. One was the gold standard from the 1920s that every unit of currency was given some valuation in terms of gold and this fixed the exchange rates between them. Bretton Woods was a similar exchange rate system that used gold but also with rules on monetary policy that had to be applied to all the members of the Bretton Woods system. More recently we've had the European monetary system where exchange rates were able to move within certain bands of each other. Of course, the UK came out of the European exchange rate mechanism in 1992. But more recently, we've seen that the European monetary system develop into full European monetary union, where there is one currency. The membership of any union implies that domestic inflation pi, the inflation that we have at home, will be equal to foreign inflation plus some control for the change in the exchange rates between two countries. So S dot being the time derivation of the exchange rate and pi star being foreign inflation. If we peg our exchange rate to another currency, then the exchange rate is fixed. So that the time derivation, the difference between the two rates must be equal to zero as the exchange rates are fixed, which means that pi would be equal to pi star, which is the foreign inflation. Now suppose that the foreign country, the country to which we have pegged our exchange rate, has zero inflation, so that pi star is equal to zero, then pegging the exchange rate gives us a fixed rule of pi equal to zero, that's equation 33. Pegging the domestic currency against the currency of a zero inflation economy is equivalent to the fixed rule of zero inflation. The question is, is such a rule credible that fixing the exchange rate giving you inflation of zero? Is this credible? And the answer is yes, because the public know, private agents understand that the cost of leaving an exchange rate regime or even a free trade area, as we've seen recently with Brexit 2016, is very costly. There's a loss of prestige. In other words, the economic confidence in that country is lost because it's no longer part of the economic system. They may face international economic sanctions. In other words, there is a lack of free trade that they enjoyed before they exited. And we might see higher borrowing costs because the country is now acting on its own. So the cost of abandoning any commitment, any political commitment, is costly. So the fixed exchange rate system gives us that credibility. Right. So we show this now mathematically. Set Rational expectations equal to the expectation of the inflation rate, which is equal to zero. Then insert pi is equal to zero from the previous line, 34, which is the rational expectation of inflation equal to zero. And we have from the aggregate supply relation that y output will be equal to its natural rate minus the shock. And of course, we see that in the absence of shocks, that under a fixed rule, pegging of the exchange rate, that output will be around its natural rate. 
if we take the derivative with respect to the shock for inflation and output, notice that the change in inflation after a shock is going to be zero, so there's no reaction of inflation to the shock, but there is a reaction from output, and we see that's one to one. So there's a one to one change, a negative change of reaction in output from a shock. So under a fixed rule, policymakers lose the ability to stabilize output. Now we can calculate the expected loss under the fixed rule. We know from equation 34 that the rational expectation of inflation is equal to zero, and from equation 35 that output is equal to its natural rate y bar minus the shock v. And we can substitute both of those into equation 2. And remember, the equation 2 is the loss function. L is equal to a half times y minus y tilde squared plus a half times lambda, where lambda is the weight that the policymaker puts on control of inflation times the difference between inflation and target inflation squared. If we replace pi with zero and y with this aggregate supply relation, y bar minus v, we have that the loss under a fixed rule is equal to half times k plus v all squared. If we take the expectation of this, so multiply this out first, we have k squared plus 2kv plus v squared, and take expectations we have the expected loss under the fixed rule equal to half times k squared plus sigma, the variance of the shock, S, sigma SS. Notice that the term in the middle, 2kv, is now zero, or it's missing here, because the expectation of it is zero. The expectation of the shock is zero, but the expectation of the square of the shock is not zero. This is the variance. We can now make a comparison of the expected loss under the fixed rule with the pegged exchange rate to that of the expected loss under commitment with the contingency for a reaction to the supply shocks. And we can see here that the expected loss under commitment is actually lower. And we see that by the fraction that's in front of the variance sigma VV, which is lambda over 1 plus lambda. Remember here also, under the fixed rule, there is no capacity to react to an economic shock, or the, in other words, the ability to stabilise output. You can make the comparison also with discretion. And here we have the expected loss function under discretion, and a reminder of the expected loss under the fixed rule with a pegged exchange rate. And to calculate the difference between the two losses, we can take the expected loss, on, expected loss under discretion minus the expected loss under the fixed rule. If we do that, we have this term here that the difference between the expected losses is half times k squared over lambda minus sigma vv over 1 plus lambda. So it's not so clear if the right-hand side of the 41 is positive in other words, if discretion is better than fixed rule, but the difference is dependent on the inflation bias, K over lambda, and also on the size of the shocks, so the magnitude of the shocks, which is given by the variance sigma VV. Talking about the real world now, the obvious benefit from joining one of the main benefits of joining a fixed exchange rate regime, monetary union mechanism, is importing anti-inflation. Indeed, when the countries, European countries, joined up to the exchange rate mechanism, one of the benefits was seen as importing a low inflation from Germany. So because Germany has such a low inflation rate, all the other countries would benefit from that. And perhaps, as we've recently seen with Grexit, back in 2015, their reluctance of the population to 
leave the euro monetary system is because of perhaps because of this benefit that would be lost or one of the benefits that would be lost is importing the low inflation rate remember if Greece is acting on its own with no credibility then by devaluing or having its own currency which is worth less than the euro there might indeed be some big imported inflationary effect uh, so that might be one of the costs of leaving now another option for economic authority is to rather than just sticking strictly to a peg that's a fixed draw with an inflation rate of zero we could allow some contingency or discretion to stabilize output after a severe fi financial or economic shock so we can do this from a mixed strategy where authorities maintain the peg when things are running normally but in the event of a massive shock there is a contingency to react so these peg can be abandoned in this case and it's thought because of this opt-out clauses um, that the gold standard and Bretton Woods systems were successful so let us go through the maths of such a scheme so it is a fixed exchange rate with an escape clause in the event of a large economic shock we start with a loss function where the loss to society is equal to half the targeted output gaps y minus y tilde which is target rate of output plus half lambda pi squared and the constraint is the expectations augmented Phillips curve in other words y is equal to y bar plus pi minus pi e minus v the supply shock the escape clause is triggered by an economic shock so when the shock is considered within a certain bandwidth minus mu or plus mu the peg is maintained so inflation is equal to pi r but when the shock v is outside that bandwidth or considered exceptional in other words if v the shock is less than minus u or greater than mu these are shocks of large amplitude then pi would be equal to pi d so pi r being inflation under the peg from the exchange rate of peg to the low inflation economy at normal times and pi d being the inflation under discretion the same as discretion in exceptional times We can define a parameter Q as the probability that the shock will be large or lie outside the bandwidth of minus nu, so less negative than minus nu, or more positive than nu. A large shock with a probability now of Q. The shock will exist. So now we can work out from this expected inflation so the expected inflation under rational expectations is going to be equal to the expectation of pi which will be the probability of inflation in exceptional times so this is the inflation we'd get under discretion 1 minus Q which is the remainder the probability that the inflation will be what we'd expect under normal times and we know what we would expect under normal times is that inflation would be equal to zero so this last second term on the right hand side is equal to zero so we have that the rational expectation of inflation is equal to Q the probability of a extraordinary shock times the expectation of the inflation under discretionary arrangement further we can replace 
inflation under discretion with optimal inflation under discretion. So in the previous term, we replace pi d here with pi oct under discretion, which is k plus pi e plus v divided by 1 plus lambda. We rearrange this for pi e, solve for pi e, and take expectations. We have that pi e is equal to q times k divided by 1 plus lambda minus q. So equation 8 is expected inflation under the assumption of rational expectations when monetary authorities are following this mixed strategy. Let's look at some special cases. If Q is equal to zero, in other words, if the probability of an extraordinary shock is equal to zero, then we can quite intuitively imagine that the expectation of inflation will be equal to zero. But if Q is equal to one, in other words, there is a 100% probability of an extraordinary shock, then it's quite easy also to imagine that the expectation of inflation will be that under discretion. In other words, that pi e will be equal to k over lambda. So for anything in between, for q in between 0 and 1, if q lies between 0 and 1, then we know that also pi e, expected inflation, will be less between 0 and k over lambda. So in other words, the expected inflation will be less than k over lambda. But on the mixed strategy, we know that inflation is less than it would be under discretion. We now look to find optimal inflation and output under a mixed strategy during exceptional times, and then we go on to find optimal inflation and output under mixed strategy during normal times. So suppose that the extraordinary supply shock has triggered the escape clause. We know that inflation will be equal to the same inflation rate under discretion if the supply shock V is less than minus mu or greater than mu. So in other words, the authorities have abandoned the peg and private agents will expect inflation Discretion of k over lambda. So we can assume optimal inflation under discretion and substitute that into expected inflation under the mixed strategy. Remember that the optimal inflation under discretion is k plus pi e plus v over 1 plus lambda. Now we can insert expected inflation under the mixed strategy into the optimal inflation under discretion to find optimal inflation under a mixed strategy in exceptional times. So by inserting 8 to so the right hand side into 9. So this term here becomes KQ divided by 1 plus lambda minus q. And this simplifies to optimal inflation, exceptional times, mixed strategy, equal to k divided by lambda plus 1 minus q, plus v over 1 plus lambda. Now we can insert 8, which is pi e under the mixed strategy, and 10, which is optimal inflation, into the aggregate supply curve to get optimal output. And here we have optimal output is equal to the natural rate plus k times 1 minus q divided by lambda plus 1 minus q minus lambda v divided by 1 plus lambda. But these are the optimal levels of inflation and output under a mixed strategy in extraordinary times. Now we can compare the optimal rates of inflation and output under discretion with that of the mixed strategy. And we see these two lines of maths here. Now we're comparing 
optimal inflation under discretion with that of mixed strategy. The difference here is this Q. Minus Q, so long as Q is between 0 and 1, then inflation under the mixed strategy must be lower than under discretion. So it beats discretion in those terms. And you can also see that output under the mixed strategy is higher. And we can see that from the addition of this positive term here. Well, minus Q must be positive, and lambda plus 1 minus Q must be positive. And this is a positive term, so output must be higher uh, than it is under discretion. With less loss of output under the mixed strategy. Now we look at optimal inflation and output under a mixed strategy during normal times. In other words, the shock is too small to trigger the escape clause. So we're on the fixed rule. Pi is equal to zero. And output is equal to y bar minus kq divided by lambda plus one minus q minus v. How did we get output? We inserted equation eight, which is for rational expectations under a mixed strategy. And pi is equal to zero into the aggregate supply curve. These are the levels of inflation and output under a mixed strategy when the escape clause is not triggered or where V is considered to be too low to trigger that escape clause. Looking at the result for output, we can see that the mixed strategy, in other words, the fixed exchange rate with an escape clause, Output is lower than that than under the basic simple fixed exchange rate. Under the basic simple fixed exchange rate, we had that y was equal to y bar minus v. Well, now we have another negative term in here showing that there is some cost for the escape clause. So, so long as there's a positive probability, in other words, q is between 0 and 1, then inflation expectations will be positive, so above zero, and output will be lower. Looking again at the result for expected inflation under the mixed strategy, we can see that lower value of Q will give us a lower value of expected inflation. So the lower the probability of the escape clause being exacted, the closer inflation will be to zero. Also, that the lower value of Q will give this negative term a lower value. So we can say a lower probability will give us output closer to the natural rate. So if there is a positive probability of Q, it should not be too high. In other words, the escape clause should be used for truly exceptional circumstances. Otherwise, it will have a more negative effect on output and a higher effect on the expectation of inflation. Finally, to remember that the success of the mixed strategy relies on the existence of the credible enforcement mechanism. And here, this enforcement mechanism is the cost of leaving the exchange rate system. We rely on this, else the probability of the escape clause being triggered is higher, and this increases the cost to society. With this in mind, next week we're going to look at another enforcement mechanism using reputation in a repeated interaction with agents and policymakers.